Welcome to the John Meyer Podcast, where we bring you thought leadership and conversation from around the world. Today, we're diving deep into one of the most critical challenges facing leaders in our rapidly evolving digital landscape. As artificial intelligence reshapes entire industries and transforms the way we work, the question isn't whether your organization needs to adapt, is how quickly and effectively you can lead the transformation. We're joined by Grady Summer, CEO of Netrix, a company at the forefront of cybersecurity and data governance solutions. Grady brings a unique perspective on what it truly takes to build organizations that don't just survive disruption, but thrive in it. Our topic today, leading through transformation, what it takes to build a future-ready tech organization in the age of AI. Please join me and welcome Grady to the show. Grady, thanks for joining me. Hey, John, good to be here. Grady, when you stepped in as the CEO role at Netrix, what were some of those biggest challenges you inherited? And what sort of actions have you been taking to bring clarity and focus to the organization? Yeah, so look, I've been here nine months. Uh, When I got here, what I found was a great set of products, uh, really fantastic people. Uh, the company had grown a lot through acquisition and it had grown rapidly. And so what you found was uh, not a real strong sense of culture, uh, not a real strong set of values. When I talked to, gosh, 100 people in my first few weeks, I'd be like, what are the values here? They're like, well, I came from this company we acquired and these were our values, but there was no, no unified value. And then with that, you can imagine there's, there's also not a cohesive product direction. And I'd say it was probably one of our biggest things. It was a lot of really cool, good products. Uh, so we're working independently without that, like that unified uh, vision of what we want to be. And so, uh, and I also say on AI, you know, although nine months ago, it feels like, I mean, wasn't that like 20 years ago in AI years? And uh, <laughs> so a lot has changed. So I don't know, I'm sitting here, I'm looking out the window. I live on a farm in Pennsylvania. And I often think uh, like growing a company is sort of like growing a farm. Like you have a vision for what you're going to do. You got to like, you got to start planning right away. You can't sit and wait till next season. Um, you kind of kind of work with the soil you're given. So uh, all I can do is just like keep articulating this vision, where are we headed, make sure it's crisp, make sure everybody gets it, you know? Grady, you talked about you uh, sense of purpose to everybody. You talked about what is your vision and people that were came in from being acquired in other companies had their vision. You, your, you know, Netrix has theirs. There's a lot of different variables that come into it. How do you really establish a shared sense of purpose and direction across these teams, especially in a fast moving tech environment where momentum can easily become chaos? Yeah. It's, uh, I'd say there's some practical things we did first, and, and that's we're in such a great space in the cybersecurity market. We're right at that like junction of, of identity and data. So part of it was pretty easy. It was like, hey, let's really focus on this. Our future is to be a leader uh, at that nexus of identity and data. And, and it's saying it a hundred times. You know, you sometimes feel as a leader that, like, man, I just, I just said this on our last all hands. Or I'm going through a similar, similar deck, or uh, I just got off of a, a round table right before we recorded this podcast. You say the same thing a lot, right? But you have to say it a hundred times uh, so it really gets to every corner of the organization. Um, but I'd say on like, uh, on a, that, how, how do you make sure everyone's on the same page? I think execution is like very much a cultural thing. And if you get the right culture, it's not to say it, it's going to be automatic. It's always a lot of work. You always got to have the right execution cadence and metrics in place. But I find like the culture really drives the execution. Like, and I'm seeing nine months into this, the, the fruit of that really coming out. Culture and execution, is this a top-down, bottom-up, or both approach? Well, it's both. So uh, one of the things I did in my first few months here was um, reaching out surveys, roundtables to understand, like, what do people think were the seeds of a really great culture here? What do we want to build on? What do we want to get rid of? Uh, But I'll say I I also sort of took a filter of my first 25 years of my career. Like, what what did I see in really great cultures? And I've been super fortunate to work at places like uh, you know, General Electric and then Mandiant and FireEye and SailPoint. And, you know, if any of your listeners know the cybersecurity space, those companies, um, the cyber ones, all have like a distinct culture. There's something neat about each of them. And so, um, you know, we're all a product kind of, of where we grew up and how we grew up. And I'd like to think I, I brought the best elements of those cultures into what we're doing here at Netrix. AI is transforming everything from operations to product strategy. Grady, in your view, what does it really take to prepare an organization for an AI first future? You know, uh, we, we've been doing so much here. I, and I, in fact, in this round table I just did, it was a really nice piece of feedback I was getting from the team that um, the people are energized by our approach to AI. And so I would say first, uh, we're really leaning into this. And I've talked to so many um, people I know at other companies that 
you know, for various reasons, we're taking a little more measured approach. Hey, we have to be really careful about how we use it. We want to, don't want to lean too far ahead. And uh, I would say we're, we're jumping in a little bit more with both feet. We always make sure we've got the right, uh, of course, compliance and, and security safeguards around everything we do. Um, but, but we're setting the tone at the top, like it's not an option to use AI. This is part of your job, uh, whether you like it or not. And it's going to be a huge driver for us. Um, I've tried to explain to our org what that means. Like the vision that I put out for our company is that everybody automates their jobs away with AI. And that sounds a little bit crazy. Like if a CEO is telling you, hey, automate your job away, you think it's because, well, you know, you, you want to you reduce staff, right? But that, I've been clear with our, our uh, folks at Netrix, that's not the case at all. Uh, I want everyone to be five times more productive, and this company is going to do amazing things. Uh, it's not about getting a little bit of efficiency. It's about that, like, going quantum leap forward and how fast we can move, how efficiently we can move, you know? How do you get your teams to separate the hype from the actual practical adoption of AI, though? I encourage them to like experiment. There's no way you can know other than experiment. And so I think like the most important ingredient to drive a really AI first culture is, uh, is curiosity. It's, it's none of this comes automatically. We've got to have people get out there, put their hands on it. And I love it. We do, you know, show and tells. We're starting off these, these formal show and tells here in the next uh, few weeks, but I've, I've reviewed so many things that our, our company is doing with AI. And it's just like people say, I'm going to try to automate this thing. And it doesn't always work. In fact, just playing with one this morning, someone made a, a custom GPT uh, to help our sales force with something. And like there were a few quirks with it, right? But it's okay. Like I want to keep stressing our culture is one where we iterate fast, we try things, and we just we keep improving. We aim for excellence, but it doesn't have to be perfect the first time. So yeah, curiosity and, and a, a willingness to try and experiment is, is top of the list, I think. I think one of the most important things from someone in your position to convey to the company and to everybody out there is to instill that we're not having AI take over our jobs and eliminate the sale, you know, the sales force, the, the people within the company. One of the biggest things you want to do is utilize it to your advantage. And just like you said, to be more efficient, to be able to do more things and do more important things, the mundane yeah. and daily tasks. We've always wanted to automate those in yeah. every aspect of, you know, don't be a click happy. I'm a click ops. I'm just doing it, whatever it is. Yeah. I want to be innovated. And that's how the company grows. And that's how everybody grows together. You said it. I mean, you're spot on. I've told our engineers, look, can can uh, AI automate a lot of engineering roles in the future? I think it will. But wouldn't we rather have it automate uh, that boring bug backlog or the feature you know, requests we get to hey, move that button 18 pixels over to the left? Nobody wants to be doing that. Uh, I say, let's automate that. And then as an engineer, you can work on like the really cool, like cutting edge scaling work that we're doing. Or how do we operate um, you know, make our products way easier to use. How do we implement like game changing new features for customers? So there's so much work to be done uh, in every enterprise. And I see AI is not like reducing the amount of effort and work we need to put into tasks, but making it so that we can tackle tasks we never thought we could get to before. One of the biggest things is organizations get stuck in this over analysis phase. How do you keep organizations moving forward without getting bogged down, not only by the fear, the uncertainty and trying to be perfect with everything before you act? Yeah, it's, um, you know, I, I wrote about this. I, I do an internal blog series. And one of the things I wrote about was excellence. And so often we think excellence is like perfection. Like it's, it's not, to me, it's not analogous to perfection. It's more about iteration. It's like I try something and move fast. So like I mentioned earlier, we encourage that culture. Like when I say we encourage it, like we lead by example, like there are things I'm experimenting with in AI and I'm blogging about to the company and I'm pushing them out and I'm encouraging them to comment and do the same. So like, we're really living that, like, let's just experiment, just try stuff. And then I, you know, I, I mentioned uh, I'm on a farm. I, I like to use these farm analogies, but um, you've probably heard it said this old proverb, like the best time to plant a tree was 20 years ago. The second best time is today. Right. Yep. And it's the same thing. Like, look, it takes a long time to drive change in the enterprise. Don't wait. We don't need six months of blue ribbon commissions to figure out how we're going to prioritize um, AI. Like, let's just jump in and try it. So, and I, I would say too, like, in terms of putting our money where our mouth is, like we've done practical things there. Like we've really streamlined the process. It used to be, we had this group that met once a month to review every potential use of AI and, you know, run through a huge checklist and approve it. And like I said, we still maintain the core of that like governance and security piece, but we're like a little, we're more open. We're saying like, look, you don't necessarily need to, to wait weeks for approval. Like get out there and try it. We've, we've given our team an awesome sandbox where they can experiment. So, yeah. You were talking about culture, but how do you really balance the day-to-day -day execution with building this long-term vision that people actually believe in and want to be part of? 
Boy, it's it's like such a one two punch, right? I think every leader grapples with that. How do you how do you set the the long term vision, but make sure we don't forget about tomorrow? Look, uh, we can't forget about it. We're a private equity owned company, and so you know how that is. Like there are, are important metrics to be met, and even at a, if you're a public company or a bootstrap company or a family owned company or or a you know solo entrepreneur. You got metrics to hit, right? So we never lose sight of that. We do what you'd expect, typical things like regular cadence meetings uh, where we're, we're looking at uh, key metrics. We're looking at the status of new investments that we're making, how they're paying off. We look at all the, the typical KPIs you'd expect. So I think we're a very data-driven culture here. Um, but then, like I said, every chance I get, I'm talking about like aspirationally, why does it matter? Like, why does it matter that we want to lead at this junction of identity and data? Um, what does it mean when we get there? You know, what does it look like when we've realized the fruits of all the change that's going on now? So, yeah, I mean, maybe simplistic, just keeping like the cadence running on a regular basis while we keep talking about why we're doing it. Brady, one of the biggest questions I usually ask in these types of conversation and in your role as a CEO, leadership's changed, vision's changed throughout it. It takes a while. Like you said, the best time to plant a tree was 20 years ago. The second time is now. Yeah. And that's so true in everything. And while you're progressing in a transformation process or you're doing and innovating stuff, leadership or executives or even managers and employees change. One of the biggest challenges there is you talked about is the culture. How do you keep that culture driving that the new person who comes on board is bought into the same stuff without having to be convinced that they're like, man, this company is it. Our culture is a family effort, a team effort that we are totally bought in. Well, I think anyone new coming in, um, look, they're going to come up to speed quickly uh, and they're going to see um, that leading by example I talked about. It's myself, my direct staff, all of our leaders, like we're, we're doing everything we can to embody these values. I'm, I ask them frequently like, hey, how are we showing our team that, that we need to be excellent or we need to have expertise in whatever we do? So I think we're leading it. We also do some things um, when you talk about like the continuity as people move in and out. We're doing some like practical, cool things with our internal knowledge base. Um, we're working now to put a, an MCP server on a knowledge base, which basically means your large language model can talk to this knowledge base with literally thousands and thousands of, of articles we've written. It's our internal Wikipedia, you know. And so, uh, you know, prototypes are really cool. I can just have a chat with my LLM and say, if I want to get up to speed on a new project, give me the, the last six months recap of what's been going on in this project. Tell me what Grady's been blogging about lately, right? And so it's it's like mind blowing when you can just have a conversation about the history of the company, the status of projects, what people are saying, who you need to talk to about something. So uh, I'm, I'm real encouraged, like just getting, I think in a way for us, like AI is so powerful. And when you can feed it, uh, train it on like all the company's knowledge, you can just get this like amazing cyborg brain that everybody can tap into. So. I absolutely love that idea where you're going into a meeting and you're like, okay, listen, I'm new to this meeting. I need yeah. to get up to speed quick. And you ask him, what is the most important factors? What are the things they need to know? And yeah. who are the key players in this? And then all of a sudden you're walking in or you were on vacation for two weeks or something. You come back, you're like, listen, I need time to review this. And now your project has been delayed for progress. Now you can actually continuously move fact. It's that model where your head's down for five minutes, reading the notes then you're right into it right. and execution. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that that's awesome. I, I like that approach. I think that the culture is going to like that. I think the people will, everything will work for the company and progress and progress and just things will just continuously evolve. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's what we're seeing already. We're seeing, um, in fact, just having this conversation uh, yesterday as well uh, with one of our leaders who was talking about how, like, they said, do you realize like how much time we used to spend you know, uh, documenting projects, writing a project charter, summarizing, you know, meetings, sending out action items. We have AI do all that now. And her point was just like, we, we almost have lost sight of the fact in just, you know, what is it, a couple of years of LLMs, but really six to nine months of doing this in the enterprise, we're already gaining so much efficiency. And like, we see the results of it. Like we're, we're all using that efficiency. Like I'm not sitting around, you know, kicking my feet up, drinking lemonade in my office here, but I'm like, man, I don't have to like, document meeting follow-ups or follow up with someone asking to do things like I'm doing that all uh, via AI. And now I get to take on new learning challenges, right? It's so every day. It's like, what did I learn today? What's my, my challenge I took on? So, you know, we're seeing the efficiency and we're seeing the benefits of that efficiency. Grady, what common leadership principles have stood the test of time and what new muscles are, are required today with AI driven error? 
And I think, you know, things have stood the test of time ever, you know, since I first started my career, I look, think about the leaders that I looked up to, uh, and they're the ones that like cared enough to be in the details, um, you know, to, I always remember starting my career as a young, uh, person at GE going to meetings with leaders and just getting like really, um, I say this in a nice way, kind of like beat up in the meeting, but you came out of it feeling like they did it because they cared. Like they're trying to make me better. And we had a yep. great culture that you could poke at people and you didn't get personally insulted. But if I, I trace like the arc from that to where I am today, a common thing is like caring about the details. And look, there's different leadership styles. There's some leaders who will say, look, you know, I'm just uh, whatever, going to hire good people and stay out of their way. Um, but to me, the best leaders are the ones that care enough about the details to like ask those tough probing questions to make sure like we're always raising the bar on it. Um, and I think hand in hand with that is like caring about the people. Um, I like, highlight for me, I learned a lot from my last uh, CEO I worked for, Mark McLean, who was just like such a great culture person, cared so much about people. And um, I, I think I, I hope to reflect a lot of that, which I, my favorite parts of my day are the round table I get to do with people or, uh, you know, when we get to go to sales kickoff and meet people face to face. So caring enough to be in the details, caring about each person as an individual and then just the curiosity to keep learning. Like I said, every day, it's like if I didn't learn something new, um, you know, probably failed in that day. And so I keep encouraging networks to do the same. And I'd say ultimately, like, I think it benefits our customers. I think uh, the best uh, companies in the cybersecurity space are the ones that are like always cutting edge, always, always trying to do something new, something different to stay ahead. So I hope ultimately like those values that we're driving networks with, you know, our customers see it show up too. Grady, you mentioned it, people. And my last question for you is, as AI reshapes job roles and workflows, how do you actually help teams evolve without creating fear or resistance? And what's your approach to ongoing education and reskilling? Well, I think you know, in terms of addressing the fear, one of it would be what we touched on earlier, which is like transparency. Uh, I think if you say, hey, we're going to bring in AI, uh, wink, wink. People are going to be like, oh, you're trying to take my job. And that's why I've tried to address it head on. Like I've got this slide I used uh, where I kind of made fun of myself. Like, really? Like you, you tell me to automate my job. But I try to explain why, like just in a sincere, straightforward manner. I want us to go faster. You know, I, I don't want to have a smaller workforce. So the transparency of that and still in that curiosity, making people, sure people know it's okay to make a mistake, you know, and, and like this sounds again, sounds cliche, but we get a chance to live it out every day. When somebody says, hey, here's this new AI uh, agent that I tried to automate something um, and didn't go well, right? It, it really screwed up. Hey, that's okay. Look, let's tweak it and go back and try again. Yep. And then on the scaling, man, we just try to make sure we've got a great set of tools for our team to use, um, that they don't have to look very far to find like a really secure LLM they can use uh, for any sort of data they need to because it's, it's completely secured and, and locked down. Like making sure they've got those tools so they don't have to go out and try to find them on them, their own. And, and then make sure they're properly trained. So I always say, look, not everyone will make the transition. All we can do is make sure that we give them like the best tools uh, that money can buy, the best training possible, and let them know like they're free to experiment. But some people may not want to take advantage of it, but I think most of them will. Most people are pretty pumped. Grady, I got to thank you for joining us today. This is an awesome conversation. Thanks a lot, John. Enjoyed it. Good talking with you. Well, everybody, thanks for joining us on the John Meyer Podcast. If you found value in today's conversation with Grady Summers about leading transformation in the age of AI, be sure to subscribe and share this episode with other leaders navigating similar challenges. Until next time, keep pushing the boundaries of what's possible.